Hey everyone, Ian here. I'm going to show you today how to turn one of these, a Raspberry Pi Pico, into one of these, a MIDI controller. So this is the launch pad if you're not familiar with it. It's a uh, MIDI controller used for audio production with digital audio workstations or DAWs like Ableton. It comes in mini and standard forms and features 64 pads along with 16 additional buttons ready to map to your application of choice. Um, the mini version starts at £75 and the standard version, which I've just shown you there, starts at £145. Quid. Um, this little kit is the Pico RGB keypad base from Pi Moroni. It's a DIY kit that takes the Raspberry Pi Pico and gives you a 16 button matrix of RGB LEDs ready to program however you'd like using MicroPython or CircuitPython, including behaving as a MIDI controller. When combined with the versatile Pico, the microcontroller available from Raspberry Pi Foundation, it costs just over £25 or $35 excluding delivery. Now I've been a really big fan of these types of pad kits, wanting to put something similar together myself ever since I first started seeing artists like Daedalus using monomes over a decade ago. The music he produced was so impressive and inventive for myself to watch as a DJ and triggering samples uh, in this way was something else. I even went to the trouble of ordering or group ordering the PCBs for a mono before realizing it was way beyond my skills to be able to put the thing together. Being an open source design, the mono was freely available for anyone con to construct. So you could buy it in kits or put it together yourself. Then along came launch pads. The launch pad was kind of Novation's commercial version of the Monome, even though it didn't use the same open source design, and has been incredibly popular since it was first launched back in 2014. I have two of them myself, an original and a standard Mark II one, which I got when they were on sale. You'll see tons of launch pad videos on YouTube if you go searching for them, with amazing light shows going along with them. So with all this backstory, you understand when I heard that Pi Moroni had a Pico kit available to be programmed as a MIDI controller and it was under £25 why I had to pick one up. Assembly for the pad is dead simple. The kit has easy to use instructions and I had it built in less than 20 minutes. The only slightly complex part is the soldering of the header pins to the Pico itself which you'll need to do with most Pico based projects anyway. You can watch previous videos of mine which cover both the assembly and the soldering of these in more detail. You will end up with a tiny controller with nice little rubber feet and there's even a couple of cases available for it to be printed on thingiverse.com. The next part is the software. What you start with essentially is a blank piece of hardware able to behave in any way you want. I've programmed a couple of animations so far to light the LEDs in particular ways but you could also set it up as a macro pad to launch an application or trigger actions that you use regularly in software. The Pico will appear as a drive when plugged in and the button with boot cell depressed. Uh, it will appear as an RP RP2 drive. In order to configure it as a MIDI controller, we need to install CircuitPython, which involves dragging and dropping a UF2 file to the device. It will then immediately reboot and allow us to install a number of other required libraries under the lib folder along with the MIDI controller code that's been handily written by Sandy J. McDonald. I had a couple of problems here in that the stable version of CircuitPython didn't actually work, causing my Pico to disappear and requiring a nuke file to get it to respond again. I eventually was able to get everything installed and using the latest version of CircuitPython rather than the release version. If all that's gone well, then congratulations, our MIDI controller is now able to be plugged in and used. I had no trouble connecting it to the keypad to Ableton and getting it recognised. In fact, I did nothing at all, it just worked. You'll then probably spend a huge amount of time navigating the various drum kits, if you're like me, in Ableton and playing with them all though you'll really need to put into them hours to get proficient at finger drumming.
you'll probably notice from my videos, even though I own two launch pads already, I'm not quite there yet. It's obviously a lot smaller than a launch pad and only features 16 buttons over the launch pad 64 and it doesn't have any of the buttons along the side either, but I see this more as a creative limitation. You may also find that the keypad, keypad skates around the desk due to the tiny little rubber pads that are included. So you might want to put a case around it in order to prevent that. I already have other ideas for other MIDI controllers I'd really like to put together. I'd really like something that features sliders and knobs to be able to control certain levels and effects. Um, yeah, and so this Pico's really made things very interesting for me in terms of uh, the amount of projects that I could be using it on. Uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please let me know in the comments and give me your own ideas for Pico style projects. Uh, until next time, I'll speak to you later. Bye.